everybody, uh, my name is Aisha, as some of you guys know and hopefully remember, and welcome to the first video of Digital ELA Lot. We hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and we're missing you all a lot. We're going to be posting videos on this channel with lessons and then attaching worksheets in the description. We want to do the best we can to make sure that you guys can keep learning and preparing for the test even though we can't have physical classes until next fall. In this particular video, we're going to be analyzing a poem from a previous SHSAT called an Ode to Fireworks. Watch the video, take some notes, and then afterwards, take a look at the worksheet we have attached in the description, and then watch the follow-up video that's gonna go over those worksheet questions. Okay, let's get into it. When we read poetry passages, we should keep an eye out for themes, symbols, and the overall tone of the writer. Themes are a lot like main ideas, which we've gone over with you guys a lot before. They're just reoccurring ideas or concepts. They can be things like love or family or hope or lots of other stuff like that. Symbols are just objects that writers use to represent the themes. Another thing to focus on as we read poetry is the tone, which is like the overall attitude of the poem. So there could be like sad tones or angry tones or lots of others. If you guys don't know any of these words or like you need to refresh yourself, pause the video and write them down. It's a good idea to take notes as we go over this. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys, this is a chart that we're gonna fill in as we read the poem. So I'm not sure if you guys remember the Osmandius poem that we did, but poetry in the SHSAT can be a little bit confusing. Sometimes like the plot isn't that clear or it's just one of the harder types of passages. So a chart like this can help you guys keep track of what's going on. This chart has three columns. There's the who column, the where column, and the what column. We're gonna use to keep, the who is gonna keep track of the characters, where for settings, and what for main event. This will just make poetry a little bit easier as on the SHSAT, in my opinion, it's like the hardest type of passage. Okay, I'm going to read the first stanza, and stanza is just a paragraph for poems. That's just what we call them. I'm going to put the text up, read it out loud, and then we're going to go over the chart and just some extra stuff. Okay, let's do it. <clears throat> In autumn, my mother drove us to the edge of the field, where the fair was set up year after year. The carousel, the bumper cars, the long, low sheds filled with prize-winning animals. We, my sister, my cousin, and I were ready for bed, already in our pajamas. This was a treat we waited all year for. We waited in the darkness for the first low, dull thwump, like someone beating an old, filthy rug hung on a wash line. Then we counted the seconds between the lightning and, the, and thunder, as we also used to do, until the sky lit up, red, green, red, blue, green, gold. In my mind's eye, I can still see the straggly, ancient oak whose branches reached up past the exhibition halls, silhouetted against the spectrum of stars cascaded behind it. Okay, let's go to the chart. So, for the Who column, we have a couple characters. We have the narrator, and we don't know their name or much about them, but we know that there's a narrator because the poem is told in first person. Then we have the narrator's mom who drove them, and then we have the narrator's sister and cousin who is with the narrator. Um, for setting, we know from the beginning of the first few lines that the characters are at a fair in the fall. There's a lot of description of the fair, so if you want to add some text evidence, that could be a good idea. I just put lines one through four because that's where most of the evidence and most of the description of the fair is. For the what column, the big event is the fireworks. They're clearly pretty important to the narrator um, and just like the whole poem in general, given that they're the title and ode to fireworks. So I suggest writing down some additional information about it. I put exciting and colorful along with lines six through seven and 11 through 12, just for some text evidence in case I need to go back for a question. Okay, before we move on, let's talk about the word in italics, the thwumps. So thwumps are an onomatopoeia, and an onomatopoeia is a word that imitates the natural sound of a thing. So it's pretty much just a sound effect. Other onomatopoeias are like pow or kaboom or crash. In this case, the words were in italics because it, they were not, or because it was an onomatopoeia. But in general, italics just means an author is emphasizing a word. They want you to put a little extra stress on it and read it a little bit differently. So in the next stanza, you're going to see that that's not, onomatopoeias are not all that italics are used for, but in this case, that's what it was. So if you guys don't know that word, and I certainly didn't know this word until pretty recently, write it down outside of the chart, um, pause. I'm now going to move on to stanza number two. <clears throat> it was one thing to look up into the sky and imagine yourself in it, or to make pictures among the clouds, which my sister liked to do. No, I would tell her, that cloud does not look like an elephant, a hat, an umbrella. But it was another thing to see the sky at night written upon with those jewels. We lived in the country. Night was night. 
All around us, crickets stridulated in the stubble of what had been somebody's cornfield, their song rising and falling. You could smell winter on the air's edge. All right, let's go to the chart. So there's no additional information, there's no additional characters in the stanza, but there's a little bit of additional information about the sister. The sister is more imaginative than the narrator. Um, so I just added that in because like the sister sees stuff when she looks at the clouds that the narrator doesn't. For the setting, we learned that the narrator lives in the country. Um, and we also learned, which is really important, that all this happens in the past. Like this is all a memory of the narrator's childhood. So add that they lived in the country and just add some uh, descriptive words in there just because there is a good amount of description. I put dark and quiet, but you can add what sticks out to you. And also make sure to make a note that this is all in the past. For the what column, there wasn't that much, like there, not that much happened in this passage, but they did mention the fireworks again, which we know is important because of the title. So if you wanna add something in extra, that's a good idea. I put memorable and special because the narrator here describes them as like jewels. Now, before we move on to the last stanza, let's talk again about the word in italics. In this case, the word was not, they were not onomatopoeias. Um, they were just meant to emphasize things. So let me move. So, in this first example, no, I would tell her that cloud does not look like an elephant, a hat, an umbrella. The not is italicized to emphasize how unenthusiastic the narrator is. In the second example, or the second lines where it had the italics, we lived in the country, night was night. The second time they say night is emphasized because like it's just meant to talk about like how dark the night is and with the country skies, in the country skies. And before we move on to our last stanza, let's talk about the tone really quickly because in the last stanza, it changes um, settings and it changes to the present tense. So it's important that we talk about the tone that the narrator had about the childhood memories. I chose happy and like nostalgic because it seemed like the narrator was thinking back to good times and like those were the words that stuck out to me. But if you guys can think of some better ones, or some that stick out to you, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next one or the last stanza. Now, in the city, when the sky dips into shadow at New Year's or on the 4th of July, I find myself craning my neck upward at odd moments. The city sky is always lit up. This is where we live now, and it is how we live now, a wash in light of every hue. Everything is a constant celebration, picking up washing at the cleaners or stopping by the corner market for a loaf of heavy bread. And the music around me is the music of people, their voices rising and falling in a hundred languages. But beneath the yellowish glow deep in the sky of all our city lights pelting out into the universe, I remember the feel of the pickup truck bumping across the ridged field as I kept waiting for those childhood bursts watching us, watching as they escorted us home. Okay, so let's go to the chart one last time. We don't have any new who's or what's, but we do have a lot of information about a new setting. So let's add that in. The new setting, which you guys all know, is New York City. The narrator describes the city in a very different way than they describe the countryside where they grew up in. So add some differences in there. I put um, loud and bright and along with the lines because for the country, I put dark and quiet. So there's like that contrast. Um, what's also important is that the New York City, the last setting is in the present. So really add that in. All right, so that's pretty much it. We filled out the chart with the main who, what and where. Now, before we wrap up the video, let's just talk really quickly about themes, symbols, and tones, like we said in the beginning. So the theme, the overall themes of this poem would be like childhood and happy memories. That's kind of how, what this whole poem is built around. There's a lot of text evidence for that, but the main piece of text evidence would be the main symbol, which is the fireworks. Um, for tone, again, I chose this after stanza two, like nostalgic and happy, because the narrator is really thinking back to good memories. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It wasn't that hard. Um, so click the link in the description to uh, get the worksheet and then watch the follow-up video that goes over the questions. I hope you guys are all doing well and healthy and miss you all a lot. Bye.